Oh, thank you. It's so nice to be here with you tonight. I'm feeling good. I got a workout in before I came here, so I think I look good for a 43-year-old man. Thank you. I'm 37. <laughs> Aging's hard. I know, I know I'm not aging horribly, but people are starting to talk to me differently. <laughs> I went to the doctor for a back problem last week, and in my 20s, he would say things like, what kind of impact injury did this? You know, the first thing he asked me at 37, do you stretch before you sleep? <laughs> I was like, no. Because <laughs> I'm kind of a risk taker, actually. I'm like the evil Knievel of bedtime, if you will. I, yeah, honestly, I, I knew I was getting older. You see that I shaved my head, you know, I was losing my hair. Nobody with this haircut, by the way, did it because they had a lot of choices. <laughs> like John Stamos has never looked in the mirror and been like, maybe I should get rid of all this lady bait here. It's not... I did this so I could avoid conversations with barbers. Because when you're going bald and you sit to get a haircut, they don't know how to talk to you anymore. I had one lady look at me and say, you know, Louie, if we cut your hair shorter, it'll look like you have more. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> where, where else do you use that kind of logic? You go to the dentist missing a tooth and he goes, you know, if we knock the rest of them out, <laughs> it'll be a full smile. I'm not kidding. The reason I started shaving my head, the last haircut I ever got, I sat down and she just started cutting my hair without asking. I was like, don't you need to know what I want? And she said, well, there's really not much we can do for you anymore. Am I balding or going into hospice? <laughs> this is stress. This is stress. I'm an anxious guy. I think that's what caused it. I've been anxious. I'm in therapy for it. And she said it's caused a lot of times by your childhood. If the world doesn't make sense when you're a kid, you grow into an anxious adult. But I was raised in the 1990s, and nothing in the 1990s made sense. Certainly nothing our parents gave us as entertainment. And if you don't remember, I have four words for you. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> That made sense. Oh, of course, tortoises all eat pizza. <laughs> no, we, we've all seen it, so it's kind of normal to us. But imagine if you weren't from here. Like, my fiance is not from this country. Recently, I explained the Ninja Turtles to her, and nothing's ever made me sound crazier in my entire life. <laughs> I was just devolving in front of her eyes. She goes, how'd the turtles learn karate? And I was like, oh, well, uh... A rat taught him. I had a really racist Japanese accent, actually. She tried to help me. She goes, Japanese, were they named after, like, kung fu masters? And I was like... Whew. Italian painters... It didn't get better. <laughs> she goes, oh, so they're turtles. Do, is their big protection move to use their shells? And I was like, literally not once. <laughs> Nunchucks. Because <laughs> we all know how turtles are known for their speed and precision. <laughs> of course we're all confused millennials. Of course we are. If you were a parent in the 90s, I gotta applaud you because you honestly had to spend an entire decade just hiding stuff from your kids. <laughs> I think of music. I don't know how many times I was driving in the car and my dad would just turn the volume off real fast for a word. I'd be like, what was that? He's like, nothing, that's how the song goes. <laughs> my, da my dad tried to raise me on his songs, like the Rolling Stones. He'd always listen to Wild Horses, which beautiful, beautiful song. We had a horse song, too, in the 90s. It was called Pony by Genuine. <laughs> Spoiler alert, not about a horse. Based on the music video, I'm not sure he's ever seen a horse. <laughs> my, 
my favorite song in the 90s was this, I was a, as a kid, I loved this song called All For Love My Color Me Bad. I begged my parents for the CD and they bought it for me. We did not know that their number one hit was called I Wanna Sex You Up. <laughs> I'm six years old listening to it in my bedroom <laughs> with my four-year-old brother. <laughs> But my mom's a good mom, so she came in, she said, no, don't sing that, that's not what they're saying. So we grew up singing different words. We sang, ooh, I wanna seven up. <laughs> All night. Which was even more confusing. Because it goes flat if you leave it all night. Slow fizzle over in this direction with the soda joke. Oh, I honestly, I, I don't know. My therapist also said it could have been your anxiety could have been caused because sometimes when kids are given too much responsibility before they're ready to handle it, it makes them into anxious adults. And I said, somebody should have told my second grade teacher before she made us play Oregon Trail on the first day. <laughs> Talk about a heavy responsibility. What a dark game. That was the first time I learned you could die from exhaustion. I got home that night, my brother was crying. My mom goes, he's just exhausted. I was like, should I get the shovel from the shed? You get in and your teacher's just like, hey buddy, I know recess just ended, but we sort of have a life and death situation going on in the computer lab. We're gonna need you to grow up pretty fast. <laughs> Make some big choices. <laughs> the first screen of that game, because we were used to video games, right? I was used to Super Mario Brothers. It's a little different. The first screen of the Oregon Trail, you have to name the four people that you're going on the journey with. And you're eight, so you know four people, right? Mom, dad, brother, and sister. <laughs> Kids today don't know that stress. They're playing games like Minecraft. Oh, you're learning coding in Minecraft? When I was your age, I was burying my mom at Chimney Rock. <laughs> Nursing grandma back from dysentery nine times. It's a little different. My parents tried to like give us board game nights at home, figured maybe, oh, that's a good way to make our kids sane individuals. That was stressful too. My mom brought home the board game Operation. <laughs> you remember Operation, right? Your parents paid $20 and you got PTSD. <laughs> what a horrifying night that was. <laughs> It was just a dangerous game. When you, if, if you were drinking your Capri Sun too close to that board and dropped liquid on it, the power in the house could go out. <laughs> but honestly, it was so dangerous. Parents today are, it's a distillation of the difference in parenting. Parents today are so protective. I think of the car seat as the perfect example. All of us have uh, one parent friend today who left their kid in a car seat just way too long, <laughs> right? It's like, does your kid still need to be back there? He's got a mustache. <laughs> kid, the kid's, kid's just like, unbuckle me, Ma. I got a job interview to get to. <laughs> it's not like that in the 90s. Nope. 90s, it was, oh, here's Operation. What are you, five? Take these electrified tweezers. <laughs> Go save a life. I'll give the company this much credit. They could have made it even worse for us because when you touched the guy's side, there was a buzzer, right? Imagine how scarring it would have been if you touched that guy's side and he just went, I have a family. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the pitch meeting was like for that game? Somebody pitched that game, and I don't think Hasbro was paying attention to the lunatic who walked in like, I got an idea for a kid's game. And they were like, okay, like tic-tac-toe? More like medical malpractice. <laughs> okay, we'll call it educational. So if the kids make a mistake, we're gonna teach them about the human body? Or? <laughs> we shock them with a small car battery. So 
So that's the game board then? <laughs> the fully grown naked man? <laughs> With his eyes just wide open for some reason? <laughs> You think we could cover him up a little bit? <laughs> what if we just make him fat enough to cover up everything? <laughs> Put one in every store. <laughs> Nobody learned anything from... <laughs> Certainly didn't learn anything from Guess Who. Remember Guess Who? <laughs> What'd that teach us? Racial profiling? <laughs> Not a diverse game. <laughs> there's four billion Asian people in the world and Hasbro's like, not in this game, there's not. <laughs> you could be blonde, brunette, redhead, or you could be a black woman named Anne. <laughs> Which always made for a super short game, by the way, if you picked Anne, right? <laughs> That was the first question. Is your character black? Ah! <laughs> tick, 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 tick. I don't think they can make Guess Who now, like they made it in the 1990s, though, because our country has become too politically polarized. We'd have to have a liberal and a conservative version of the game. <laughs> and nobody wins. <laughs> in the new version, before you take a turn, first you have to win a Facebook fight against a distant relative. <laughs> like, does your character have dark hair? Does your character <laughs> They'd be totally different games. The, the conservative guests who would have roundabout questions, they'd be like, uh, if your character moved to my neighborhood, what would happen to property values? <laughs> well, the liberal guess who would just take forever. <laughs> because the information would keep changing every turn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First turn, you'd be like, is your character a man? Second turn, how about now? <laughs> Flip the game board over. And... 